Good afternoon to everybody. It is a delight to be here. My name is Omkar and over the next 15 minutes, I want to tell you something very, very important. I want to take you to the world of AI agents and help you to become an entrepreneur in this future fast world. But before I talk about how do you be an entrepreneur in the AI first world, I want to tell you a little bit about my entrepreneurial ventures. Believe me, I've been an entrepreneur three times over and there's a very high probability that I'm going to do it the fourth time. To start the story, I want to take you to a bustling middle class neighborhood. I'm taking you to a small bustling middle class Maharashtra neighborhood called Kherwadi, Bandra East. Right? Not Bandra West, Bandra East. That's where I spent most of my childhood growing up. And expecting a Steve Jobs to come out of Bandra East, Kherwadi, is, is a really, really high task. But I was born to working class parents, my mother a principal, my father an HR professional. I scored good grades. Along with my best friends, I created a footwear and initially it was hard. In the first year, we were only able to sell 100 shoes. But in a matter of three years, we were able to sell 10,000 shoes across Lisbon to Hong Kong from New York to Singapore. After that, what I did, thank you. After that, I earned a little bit of money. Yeah, that was DC Angor. After that, I earned a little bit of money out of this whole transaction and business and decided what every 22, 23 year old wanted to do, backpack across the world. So I took a brave step, much again to the disappointment of my middle class Maharashtrian parents, that I wanted to travel the world. So I ended up in Europe. I was backpacking across Europe and my mind was filled with curiosity. I wanted to learn every language. I wanted to learn how to cook every cuisine. I wanted to learn about different martial arts, but there was only one problem. I had no money. So I thought of an experiment. I said that I know a few things and let me start sharing these few things to the people who are curious enough to learn from me. And in return, they can teach me what they have. What started as a small experiment to satisfy my need of learning a new language and learning a new cuisine suddenly started becoming a movement. I came back to India and my lifestyle of bartering skills and making new friends ended up affecting thousands and thousands of people. If you see this photo, this photo is on my terrace where I used to call a random bunch of strangers with only one promise, actually two. You will learn something what you don't know and you'll make a new friend. This movement was called Skill Street, and we finally made it into an application and a business. After this, third time around, I realized that I had a pattern, right? I find a problem, I find an opportunity, and I like building things around it. Third up was Beehive. Again, a problem which I saw while in my short duration of a corporate, that people have a lot of knowledge to themselves. But unfortunately, this knowledge is not shared within the organization. So we created a knowledge sharing network for employees so that they can learn from each other and they can tap into tacit knowledge of people so that questions in the organization such as where is that file, who knows that, that problem stop exists. Now the reason why I'm telling you all these three entrepreneurial ventures is to actually tell you that entrepreneurship the way I did it or everybody did it 10 years ago is fundamentally going to change. And I want to start off that by a small little episode. I was studying psychology in Russia, in Moscow. And I did not like studying in libraries, but I used to like studying in beautiful coffee shops. So one fine day, I thought of exploring a new coffee shop, a little outskirts of the city of Moscow. I end up over there, that coffee shop looked like it survived the Cold War. Right out of a, sci a spy movie, I was sitting over there, worn out to uh, sofas, dim lights, jazz music playing, and I'm trying to study in that environment. As I'm studying, in comes a tall Russian man. Scruffy beard, heavy leather jacket, sits right next to me. After sitting right next to me, he, he looks at me, we exchange a pleasant smile with each other, and a few minutes later, in a thick Russian accent, he ends up asking me, do you speak English? And I'm like, yes, I suppose. I do not know whether this was a friendly conversation or a start of a KGB interrogation, 
But I'm like, yes, sure. And after a few exchange of pleasantries where he asked where I was from, so on and so forth, he told me that he was an AI engineer. And I had heard the term artificial intelligence quite often, right? Along with the other tech buzzwords such as blockchain, web3, in tech circles or in sci-fi movies. So I was fairly curious and I asked him, boss, what do you exactly do as an AI engineer? And he got very excited. He opened his laptop and he started showing me a program which it was written. It looked something like a matrix without the cool green tint. Once I started understanding the program, very excitedly told me that he has created a program which integrates into the CCTV cameras across the city to identify people and estimate their social score and think of a probability whether they would commit crime or not. I'm like, this is scary, but interesting. Little did I know I was on my third cup of coffee already. After that, I asked him a little bit more about what exactly happens under the hood of AI and he started explaining it to me. He was shaking his hands, he was using the napkin to draw some neural networks and at the end of that conversation, my curiosity peaked. Until that time, all I thought was AI was just a technology. But now I realized AI is actually a potential. It's a weapon of imagination to achieve anything and everything what an entrepreneur aspires to be. But still, the word AI and everything around AI was restricted to research labs, was restricted to sci-fi movies. But then something happened. On 30th of November 2022, the world changed. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, launched ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT democratized artificial intelligence as nobody ever had. Suddenly, it was not restricted to movies, but it was on the phones of each and every person. Anybody who had an internet connection and a phone could use ChatGPT. All the way from writing mails to coding to programming to completing all your school assignments, all had ChatGPT. In fact, I read once that there was a man who created his wedding speech out of ChatGPT. Imagine giving ChatGPT that kind of trust. With this, I decided that as ChatGPT is launching, the best place for my curiosity to be is that in Silicon Valley in Bay Area. So I locked stock barrel, I moved over there and I was working on my previous startup. And while I was working on my previous startup, I happened to sit out of a co-working space where a lot of other early stage entrepreneurs were really hustling it out. I was, I clearly remember one fine evening, I had just come back from a conference and I was going through a heap of visiting cards. And as I was going through the heap of visiting cards, I realized that I have to send emails to all of these people, telling them that, hey, it was great to meet you at the conference and set up follow-up tasks. I was sitting over there Saturday evening and then there was one other light which was working in the co-working space. That gentleman walks over, Vijay, I knew him, smart as a tack. Okay, somebody who you seem to trust because they know more than you. And he gives me a jab. He's like, Omkar, don't you think that life would be easier if you clone yourself? And my eyes popped, uh, my ears popped up. I'm like, clone myself? I'm going to put this on pause. Explain what do you mean? It's like, I am talking about AI agents, right? AI agents are essentially human clones, but the ability to do their work is faster. And I'm like, explain it a little bit more. And he's like, chat GPT gives you answers once you ask something. But AI agents execute things when you ask it. All you have to do is give it a prompt, like go through all my visiting cards, understand what is the context and send emails and schedule meetings. Your three hour work is condensed into three minutes. And this was something fascinating. And this again, doesn't seem as a distant future. Excited enough, I started researching and understanding how AI agents can impact our daily lives. And this is the opportunity what I want to present to you. Where being an, being an entrepreneur is never going to be the same again in the world of AI agents. The way I build businesses, the way people build businesses 30, 50 years ago, it has completely changed. And you know how it has changed? It has never been easy. 
building an entrepreneurial venture as of today, 2024, it has never been easier. But of course, it comes with a caveat. It comes with a caveat that if you want to be an entrepreneur in this AI agent world, you have to assume three roles. And I'm going to tell you what those roles are. Rule number one is that you have to be a dreamer. And dreamer essentially means that your ability to think about infinite possibilities. Your ability to think of purpose because everything else is going to be an AI agent's job. Doing market research for you, pulling up reports, everything around can be delegated to AI agents. But bringing purpose to the company, thinking how high can you fly, that's the responsibility of the entrepreneur. The best part, that is the only responsibility of the entrepreneur. Rule number two is that of the builder. Now, here's the funny part. The heavy lifting zero to one journey of building an entrepreneurial venture can be easily given to that of AI agents. But imagine this. Your venture is the horse. The AI agent is the lake. You are the one who has to carry the horse all the way to the lake and make it drink. There is no better time to actually showing execution skills because everything is going to be served on a platter to you. Your AI agents are going to do all the heavy lifting. You want your license, it's a prompt away. You want your market research reports, it's a prompt away. Your ability to action on those is what's going to be determining whether you are going to be a successful entrepreneur. Number three, and the most important one is being the navigator. The navigator is somebody who is able to hit the curveballs right out of the park because the bad part about this is that it's going to be easy to become an entrepreneur, which means that it's going to be highly competitive. Your 1 to 100 journey of an entrepreneur in the world of AI agents will make sure that are you in the position to actually manage uncertainties, your ability to synthesize the data and take critical decisions is what it matters. So forget about hard skills about entrepreneurship. They're all going to be taken care by AI agents. I want a marketing guru. It's an AI agent. I want a sales superstar. There's an AI agent. But all I have to do is a certain these three rules. And in order to do that, what can you do right now is what I'm going to tell you in the next minute. I'm going to tell you the six tenets of becoming an AI first entrepreneur. Number one, go home and get your hands dirty with AI tools. We are just talking about the layer when we are talking about chat GPT. Every single day, new AI agents, AI tools are launching. Learn how they work. Learn what is the application of it. No age is too young to actually understand how AI works. And there is no profession which is excluded, which AI agents can't really help. Number two is look for problems, not ideas. It becomes extremely easy to start thinking of ideas. But let me tell you, the fundamental of entrepreneurship is ability to spot problems and solve it. It's easy to think ideas. It's difficult to find problems. But we are blessed in a country like India, where you just step every two meters, you're going to find a problem. Your responsibility is to fall in love with that problem and look at AI agents as your weapon of choice solve them. Third is experiment and try and fail again. The whole idea is 10 years ago when I started my first business, my experimentation cycle was at least three months. With AI agents, you can experiment in within three hours, whether this is going to work, not going to work. You can keep experimenting. You can keep iterating. The speed at which you're able to experiment is phenomenal right now. And with every experimentation, you're going to taste failure. But once again, cliche, but every failure of your experiment is getting you closer to the right one. The fourth one is cross collaboration. And I cannot emphasize that you need to start collaborating with people who don't look like you, who don't think like you, who don't have the jobs like you. The beauty of output of an AI is how diverse its prompt is or how diverse set of people have worked on it. Same thing as an idea, right? The idea is only as beautiful depending on how diverse set of people have actually worked on that idea. So here's your opportunity to start building a community, not with the people who look like you, who work like you, who, uh, who literally admire the same things as you. Then 
keep thinking small keep thinking big but start acting small you do not have to go out there and solve hunger poverty problems from day one but look around you 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 want to fix your classroom management you can build an ai agent for that you want to you you get trouble dealing with your homework you can build an ai agent for that start solving small problems right around yourself build that muscle of problem solving and gradually you can start gasping for bigger problems and last but not the least is develop a human ai entrepreneur mindset and what do i mean by that is essentially that leave the heavy lifting to the ai agents you should not be wasting time in doing task which is mundane which is repetitive which is not helping you think strategize or give a creative output the world is going to be reshuffling they're going to be only one set of people they're not going to be two set of people anymore people who are doing mundane repetitive task and people who are thinking and doing creative things this set of people the people who are going to be doing creative things are the ones who are only going to survive because an unfortunate truth about ai and irrespective of what people keep on telling you ai most definitely will replace a lot of jobs jobs which are repetitive jobs which are redundant ai is going to be starting to take those jobs they have in the last 3 years we have already seen that but the best part about all this is that there is one job ai can never take in fact that job actually created ai and that job is of entrepreneurs thank you so much